Hello and welcome to Anxious Black Belt Podcast. I'm your host, Les Bukta. Anyway, I will try to be louder. Perfect. <laughs> you don't have that problem, don't you? No, no. I, yeah, I project my voice quite a lot. So, yeah. so today I'm with... Um, Sensei John Jarvis from Kazaku Karate Do Jutsu. Jiu Jitsu, Jiu-Jitsu yeah, Jutsu, Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. <laughs> Jutsu Do? Yeah, we'd, we're having a look at potentially maybe not necessarily remarketing, but also maybe just changing a few logos and stuff, maybe. Mm. Where's that um, done? Um, <clears throat> just to maybe just sort of bring it a little bit more up to date. You know, I know we've had the logo now since 2017, which is a great logo. I'm not going to change anything on our uniforms or anything like that. It's just mm. maybe for probably more marketing purposes, maybe. Because yeah. um, you went more now into the kind of self-protection and practical side of karate instead of the yeah. development. Yeah. I think the thing the thing was, where you know, the association that I came, came from before was, um, you know, very key-on driven, very, very basic driven. There was hardly any, um, you know, pad work, um, self-protection type of thing. You know, it was literally all you know, line drills and so on and kata, which was great because obviously mm. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now if it wasn't for that. Um, but I think obviously moving away from that um, and being associated now with, the, you know, the BCKA mm. and Peter and Ian and all those other guys as well, um, there was just a different route that I wanted to take, you know, back in um, 2017, yeah, when we, when we started up. Um, and it's just sort of, progress from there really you know the more practical side of things mm. for me and the, you know we were practicing kata before but not understanding why we were doing them in a certain way and i think there's a lot of people like that i think yeah for sure um mm. so how did you end up being a full-time teacher so being a full-time teacher so um so when uh so i started karate with Kieran, that's my oldest son, he started, um, well, back in 2003, it was a thing where we had a guy come round, knocked on the door, hi, we're the local karate club, blah, 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 mm-hmm. um, why don't you come and join us, and literally, they're only just down the road, in fact, I'm still training from, you know, our club in that dojo yeah. now, um, and it was basically, you know, you look like you could do with losing a few pounds, why don't you, <laughs> uh, why don't you come and join in, so I signed up with Kieran. Um, and then, you know, we did it once a week and then, you know, the instructor said, oh, you're doing really well, you know, why don't you come on board as maybe a potential leader? Mm. And, um, and then that's how I got sort of enticed in with it. And then through that, I then became sort of an instructor and then Kieran was doing it more. Then Mm. Jess signed up and then Chrissy did it as well. And then obviously in later years when Harvey came along, Mm -hmm. then he, he, he started doing it as well. So that's, uh. That's sort of how that sort of started, really. Um, but yeah, it was um, yeah, it's a great journey. Did, did you take over the club or they moved no? Or... So so with the club that we were at, it was uh, you know I was very much a volunteer. Um, you know, we did a hell of a lot for the club. Um, you know, I did get free training, mm-hmm. um, but it was very sort of limited. And I'm not you know I'm not going to slag the club off because I wouldn't be doing what mm. I'm doing now if it wasn't for it. Um, but I just feel as though for myself, I needed more. Mm-hmm. Um, and to do that, I needed to branch out. So it was the case of, right, let's move away from that, set our own club up um, and see where that takes us. Um, did I think I was going to go full time back in 2017? Not quite, because it was, you know, we only had a, you know, a handful of students that, mm. that came across and we had, a you know, we were advertising on Facebook as you were back mm. then. It wasn't obviously as massive as it is now. Um, you know, we got some new members in and we signed up some little kiddies and we're doing some kiddie classes, but we weren't hitting anywhere near where I needed to be to do it as a full time mm. thing. Um, but then I ended up getting a business manager, um, a guy called Gordon Bertram. There's quite a lot of people that know him. Um, and he helped us sort of, you know, grow the school. Mm. Uh, unfortunately we, you know, we couldn't stick with it because obviously COVID hit. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, we got to a, a decent level in 2020 where I could go full time. Um, but then, 
obviously COVID hit yeah. at that point as well. That's when I gave my job up in 2020, just in the January. And then obviously <laughs> COVID hit in the March. Um, but then we had, you know, obviously that, that, that period of that time, we ended up losing, I think it was about 100 students, I think, at the, at the time. But because of the furlough and yeah. you know, the, the mortgage stuff, we managed to obviously keep everything afloat. So, And after the COVID, everybody wanted to join up <clears throat> and get out. Uh, and that's obviously how we've managed to keep it as a full time thing at the moment. So we're doing, I say, at the moment, it's a, mm. you know, we're doing really well with it. So how how um, how was how difficult was to do the leap from the okay, I'm leaving my work to be a full time teacher. It's um, I kind of it for me it was taken out of my hands. Yeah. So I'm still don't feel like a full time teacher um, because I'm full time dad and that's my job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but how how did you go about you know yes. Now I'm going, and what kind of fears were with it? Associated? Yeah, so like that massive jump. I've always I've always worked in the print industry from when I was a kid right the way up until I left, um, and you know I'd always had a relatively decent paid job. So you know we were you know being able to afford to go on the odd holiday mm-hmm. and have a nice car and, and whatever, and then it was the thing of right okay, if I take this leap. What you know is it going to work? Mm. Isn't go- is it not going to work? Am I am I going to completely have a massive flop and obviously fall straight on my face and everybody's going to laugh at me? Um, but then it was the thing of right. Well, no, I've got a really good support network of people that are going. No, it will it will survive. You will do well at it. Um, I think that's probably the thing. It's like you were saying, you know, uh, obviously we had the seminar with you earlier on and you were saying about being anxious about, mm. you know, the fears of this and the fears of that. There was a massive fear of not, not achieving anything. Mm. Um, but I think because I had so many people that had my back in 2017 when we set up, mm-hmm. there was always that, this, you know, these people can help me out. Paul Lynch is, is, is a big person for me in my life. Um, Sorry, <clears throat> he's helped me out with quite a lot. <laughs> I didn't expect sure. this to go this way. <laughs> um, but if I'd had something where I was a bit like, I'm not quite sure about this, I'd go to him mm. and then he'd give me the reason for doing it yeah. or the reason for not doing it. So he was always really open with that. Um, and for me, uh, I had like a massive support network of people, not just the family, but obviously yeah. outside of that as well. And I think that just confirmed everything to actually, no, let's push forward with this and obviously achieve what we can with it. So, mm. uh, yeah. But what, what would you advise people like myself with thinking going full time? What would you do and what would you recommend not to do? Because I'm sure there were some mistakes. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. I think, um, I think, Sometimes, you know, as, as if you want to be able to have that certain amount of in, income coming in. Now, again, from a business perspective, you know, a lot of people turn around and say, oh, you shouldn't be making money out of martial arts and da 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 da, you know, which in some respects, yeah, okay, some of you might, you know, some of those guys might be right. But also, likewise, if you want to be able to do it and do it as a full time career and be able to have the things that you want to have. Mm-hmm then you've got to obviously take some of those risks and those, you know, those chances. And one of those risks, potential risks was maybe teaching some of the children that were maybe too young. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we take them from four years of age, rightly or wrongly, it is very challenging. I'm not going to dispute that, but we set that age group from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And I, I would really struggle now to be able to go back on that. Mm-hmm. Um, what the future holds, I don't know, but as it stands at the moment, potentially I would maybe either go from five up or maybe even six up depending. Um, that's probably one of the things that, uh, uh, you know, I would maybe potentially think about making, making a slight change on, um, doing it from a positive thing. I've got more time now for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'd always work shifts or nights and I, you know, me and Chrissy, potentially wouldn't really see each other during the week because I'd be in bed, she'd be at work and so on and so on. I know Um, how it is because my my whole family is printers as well. So my mum, my aunt, my brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All print. Yeah. Printing people. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, but from the the positive thing, 
it's li- the positive thing. It's literally having more time for ourselves um, and doing the things that we want to do mm-hmm. and not being dictated to by the hours that we work. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, it's hard work because, you know, you've got all the admin side, you've got all the, you know, the, the seminars, the gradings, the classes, the, all the other stuff as well. Um, but and now my, you know, my daughter, she's now, you know, had her own baby. So we look after Bonnie on yeah. a Wednesday, which I couldn't do before, mm. you know. And um, so all the, all the positive things from running your own club, you know, yes, you have a bit more cash coming in, um, you know, and what cash we do get, or sorry, what money we do get coming in, we try and put as much back into it, mm. whether that's new, you know, new T-shirts, new stock, um, you know, put on different free seminars or something like that. We might do um, summer socials where, you know, during the school holidays and stuff, we might put like a fun day on for the mm. kids. Um, so there's loads of different things, you know, potentially you can do with, you know, in the positive sides of running, running your own club. I, I'm not t- dictated to by anybody else either. And as well, <clears throat> for those people who, because I, I've been, my teacher was like, you know, you should not make martial arts money from martial arts. Yeah. But then if you've got a full-time job, you're coming from a full-time job, you're so tired that you cannot provide the quality training for people. Yeah. So you're doing kind of disservice to people being a mediocre yeah. at best. Yeah. So, you know, now having time, I can think what I want to do on session. I can do the half year plan, three months plan, yes. whatever, and put the 100% effort to a educate myself more to be better and then yeah. pass it on. So, you know, you done well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But obviously, you're, you're really good with uh, making seminars because you've got Ian like yeah. two, three times a year. Yeah. And now, obviously, thank you very much for having me. No, I appreciate hope everybody that. enjoyed it. Um, how did you go about that? So... Because, because, because yeah. that, it is, you know, I'm organizing quite a few seminars as well and yeah. it is stressful, you know, you mm-hmm. have to invest money up front, you never know how many t- people turns up yeah. Then get the teachers, pay the teachers, and that's not cheap stuff. So yeah, how do you go about that. So I think you know the thing with you know starting off, you know having having the seminars was the thing of right. Oh, you know, Ian's name popped up on the social media, and I was like, oh, okay, then let's. Well, you know, he's a the practical at karate Ooh. guy. Yeah, Ooh. let's go. <laughs> let's go to him. So I, I you know, I, I sort of reached out to him and said, you know, would it be, would it be beneficial for us to have you coming in and teach a seminar um and then it was the thing of right okay how do i go about marketing this because i thought i'd never done it before um so then it was just the fact of right well okay let's get it out on all of our social media pages and then let's get people to like share comment the more comments you get the bigger you know uh, algorithm you get on your on your posts um and then all of a sudden it was the fact of, oh you're such and such oh can we come and you know join in on mm. your your seminar i said all right fair enough so then it was just creating that that thing of you know, creating an email with mm. all the info on it, which I'd never done before because obviously yeah, I'm you know I like hitting things. I don't like tapping on a keyboard. That's <laughs> that's that's my thing. Um, and then you know, like I say, you know, with that, then all of a sudden we're getting Ian coming in, and the more I got to know him, the more seminars that I started to mm. do with him. And then it was the thing of, you know, having that connection with him, then talking to Peter about setting up a, a syllabus mm. to be able to be affiliated with them. Um, and then, obviously, I've met yourself mm-hmm. and a few other guys as well, you know, been to Germany, obviously, with Christian. Yeah. And so we have, I think, all of us now have that massive, you know, network of people yeah. that <clears throat> we can all bounce off each other. So, you know, if you'd asked me a question about, you know, how to do this and that, I'll try my best to try and find out what it is that we do with it. Mm. And also, likewise, it would be the fact, I'll look at your content and I'll go, I like that. Mm. I want to be able to take that. So some of the stuff that I've seen you do, I've taken and I've gone, okay, that's how I want to be able to do that now in our our, our club. Cool. So, because you, you're mainly following Ian's kind of recipe for karate. Uh, yeah, I th- yeah, I think because where we were so... Um, so can, can it, how do I put it? So my old affiliation that I was with, they were very much like, you can't train with anybody else or you shouldn't go out and train with anybody else. It's, it's our way or mm. no way, basically. 
And like I said, I'm not trying to slag them off at all. It just I needed something more yeah, well, for myself. That's how they've been set up. Yeah. So they're, 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 they're gone yeah. and that's it. Uh, and I think the fact that when somebody puts that barrier in front of you, you can't go and do this. Yeah. I'm like, well, actually, why can't I? Watch me. And Yeah, yeah, <laughs> watch me do it. So... Uh, and that was one of the things. So it was just literally right. Well, let's go and let's go and try and see what this is about. And then all of a sudden, because we didn't really do the um, kata bunkai application stuff for the katas, it was more of the the um, you know just the showing of the kata, the performing of the kata, and not understanding what we were using them for. As soon as I started to see what Ian was about, then I was like, ah, this is the direction that I want to go in. Um, you know, the old club was very, I was very tournament based, very competition based. Uh, and I did pretty well at it along with the kids as well. Um, and I think because of that, that was the journey that we were on at the time. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden things decided to change, you know, we decided we, we wanted a little bit more. So Yeah, I like about Ian is that he's very structured. Everything is very clearly described. Yeah. You see what's going, which mine is kind of a mess. <laughs> okay. Listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm caught. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. But to describe it, it, it struggles sometimes, right? So I, that's why I copy a lot of things from Ian. Yeah. I watch him how he teaches and, and taking the same from Christian. Yeah. And other people because uh, it's just still a creative process in my uh, confused head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, <clears throat> so obviously, guys. Uh, those who listen and would like to go and join the seminar, so support the uh, Kazaku Do. Yeah, yeah, Jutsu, uh, yeah. <laughs> the link is gonna be in, in the in the description down down below. Yeah. Um. Obviously, if you wanna support the show, uh, grab the mugs, merchandise, or you can buy us a coffee. Uh, links in the description. And another question to you is, um, how did karate help you with mental health? Did it or did not? Yeah. Well. It's like you said earlier, because obviously, you know, we had you at the, the seminar today. When you put your uniform on, you have that body armor, don't you? Mm. You you know, all of a sudden you put that uniform on and then all of a sudden you become Superman. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my, biggest, my biggest fear is acceptance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, am I doing the right thing? Does it look okay? What are people thinking about what I'm delivering? Um, but I feel, as though, I feel as though I'm at my best when I have my uniform on. Mm. You know, it's like if I go out and have a coffee with someone, even if it's just one of the students, I, you know, sometimes it's that, not awkwardness, but you feel slightly anxious yeah, yeah. because it's like, yeah, it's a totally different setting. But then when you're in, when you're in your own dojo and you've got your own uniform on, that's where I can be me. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, like you said earlier, you could, I, you know, you laugh at yourself. I do. I mm -hmm. laugh at myself. I'm, I crack a joke in the dojo and I'm laughing in my own head. I'm going, yeah, that was funny. <laughs> but then some of the other guys think that wasn't really funny at all. Um, I know. But, I think I've done one of those jokes today. <laughs> yeah. But I think for, for mental health, it, it always gives me something to... Oh. Just something coming back. Um, oh God! Why does it always catch me? That's okay. Yeah. Um, we all have challenges. We all have challenges, and I think um, I lost my dad in nineteen through cancer. Um, I also lost a best friend before that, or a very good friend before that, uh, to cancer. And every time that comes up. It always yeah, hits. Yeah, yeah. It always hits. And karate for me is the release. Mm -hmm. Is the release from that. Yeah. In a way, it's very similar to me. I lost my dad as well, but not to the cancer, but to the alcohol. And yeah. He's, uh, he tried to quit, but unsuccessfully, and eventually got him. So he, he is very emotional always, but, you know. Yeah. Um, that's okay. Yeah. We can be emotional. And, you know, I didn't expect a, that to come out, Liz. It's, it's a, <laughs> we talked about it today on yeah. the seminar that you know, showing emotion, especially through the high-ranking martial arts, is a very good example for um, students, right? Yeah. So you're just a normal person who goes through everything and um, have to process it and have to out, have an outlet. And yeah. I think karate is a very good outlet for that. You know, mm -hmm. there's nothing like smashing pads and absolutely having a release. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, what's the future for uh, Kazaku? 
Except changing the name yeah. to Jutsu. Well. And going and taking over all, all, all country. <laughs> yeah. The reason, I'll I tell you the reason why we've been sort of looking at different types of logos and stuff um, is because we've been doing um, a thing called uh, Kazoku Combat Defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, and we get quite a lot of ladies coming into mm-hmm. that, and we've got a few guys obviously do it as well. Um, and it's a, a place where they can come to be them. It's a place where they can do some exercises, it's a place where they can hit pads, you know, kick things, do a little bit of groundwork and stuff like that. And as that stands at the moment, we are inspired by that and inspired by the karate mm-hmm. to actually set up a brand new program so this is this is this is a like a this is a off, yeah. this is a, this is a first nobody else knows about this les <laughs> hush, hush, tell yeah um so we're actually looking at setting up a, 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 another full-time program within the karate but it's called kazoku combat defense mm-hmm. and it will be um three different age groups so we've got six to nines ten to thirteens and then fourteen plus mm-hmm. um and it will be solely, uh, it, there will be gradings within it. So it won't be belts, it will be shorts mm. and t-shirts, but a Velcro patch um, where they can achieve things. Uh, there will be groundwork, <coughs> locks, holds and all these other bits and pieces. So that's something coming up relatively soon. Um, we've had uh, some paperwork come through for a venue that we've managed to get. Oh, okay. um, potentially, it's looking like we'll be starting. When did we go about looking? First of April. So the first of April yeah, is when. Is full? Yeah, this. no, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So first, first of April. Um, that's when we're looking at sort of starting, uh, starting that up. But obviously, we still got. We're still in the process of looking at logos. Yeah. Uh, but but that, that's gonna be uh, more self defense or, 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 or yeah. So it's a, it's gonna be a lot of like you know boxing gloves, uh, freestanding kick bags, a lot of you oh, know okay. combinations on bags. Um, doing a bit of uh, BJJ as well on the ground and stuff. So it's you know we're not gonna be doing any catters, no catter application, nothing like that. It's mm-hmm. just gonna be solely a lot of like you know defense stuff, a lot mm-hmm. rape escapes for the ladies as well. Yeah. Um, so that's gonna be the main thing. So that's sort of you know for the future of the club. Yeah, we've got that in the um, sort of in the process, um, and also obviously for the karate, still moving forward with that as well. Um, you know, the more seminars that we do, the more of a better understanding yeah. that I have of different ways to teach as well. Um, and you know, you know, there's a few obviously a few guys out there that teach teach children, and I try to you know get around those guys or get in contact with those guys as well. There's a very nice guy called Mike Turbot. We had a mm-hmm. chat with him uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Shout, shout out to Mike. Yeah. If you're on the Mike's book, yeah. um, go on uh, Lulu, I think. He's on a Lulu. That's correct, uh, yeah, Ma- yeah. Mighty Mitch, Mike is loving it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so mm-hmm. we, we, had a, we had a conversation, um, and I think he's on about trying to do some sort of seminar like how to teach kids and yeah, how to yeah, develop he's, he's them. Really good it, yeah. yeah, so um and lots of things from him we've actually sort of taken away. So it's five rules about paying attention and and other things. So but for the future of, of where we are, we you know, we're just trying to move forward. K- uh, Kieran, our oldest son, um he'll be giving his notice in at his job uh potentially in the next week, two weeks. Oh, cool. So we'll be taking him on full time. Um so that then helps the development of everything else with mm. the admin and the teaching and obviously giving us a little bit more of a break. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, there's only obviously so many so many uh classes that we can teach uh before you start getting burned out. Yeah. So taking Kieran on is gonna help <clears> with that. So uh yeah. So we've got a lot of team leaders at the moment coming through as well that are you know, we're de- trying to develop develop those. Um, and we've got um, some sort of leadership teaching um, sessions that we're going to have for those as well. We tried to do it bef- um, just after Christmas, but something fell through and it didn't yeah. quite happen. Um, but that's that's something that we've got coming up in the next sort of few weeks oh, or a couple ex- of months. Exciting so, times. Yeah, so pretty um, good. At- so you said you're doing BJJ as well. Yes. How do you find it in the age? I, I'm asking because yes. I just come back to BJJ as well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, going against the 20-year-olds is yeah. a bit tiring. Yes. <laughs> um, so the BJJ, so I mean... I'm sort of lucky enough to... So the guy that I actually train with, he's a guy that I used to go to school with, but I didn't realise, you know, obviously growing up as an older man, I didn't realise he ran his own club as well. So uh, it was only by accident we actually got 
put in touch with him uh, and I realised, I thought, oh, I know who you are. And then all of a sudden we started to train. So, um, so we do a lot of, we don't necessarily do lots of sparring rounds. We do a lot of, te- there's a lot of teaching, a lot of practising. Yeah. Um, there are obviously a few where we're doing some sparring rounds and you're right, it does get challenging. Um, I think after the first maybe three, four, five months, maybe I started to, I got a bit of a shoulder injury and I think that was due to, you know, one of the arm, you know, one of the guys wrenching the arm round. And so I was sort of put out of action for a little while, not put out of action, but my training was a lot less. Um, so as an older, as an older guy, so I'm 49 now, um, as an older guy, I am starting to find things a bit more challenging. Um, you know, but also likewise, I don't, let that stop me doing what I want to do. Mm. Um, you know, it's like today, you know, if I wasn't comfortable being thrown on the mat today, mm. I would have got someone else to do it. Yeah, yeah. But because I was comfortable with it, I was, you know, you know whatever happened, happened. Mm. And I know that I, I trusted you mm. when you were doing your throws and, and your, your takedowns and stuff. I trusted you 100%. Otherwise, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done mm. it. Thank you. So, uh, so obviously from that side, that's a bonus mm. for you, right? <laughs> Yeah. And it's nice that, you know, <clears throat> I, was, I was talking about it with Christian Vedevard. And the thing that it stands out is he's always doing a training with people, mm-hmm. no matter what seminar. And I do that as well. So, yeah. as you've seen today, yeah. there was no problem picking up mats and tidying Absol- up. Tidying absolutely. Mats. Yeah. And Christian does the same when he's doing his things. And, you know, you stepping out and be a uke, yeah. it shows that you, A, you're open minded. Uh-huh. And, be you leading by example yes. instead of just saying, "Oh no, you go there and you yeah, be yeah, wrong, yeah. and I be here, big boss, right?" Yeah, 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 so absolutely. I've, yeah, I've, yeah. I, you know, I, as I said before, the full compliments for uh, having a lovely team because yeah. you've got really nice people. What's the secret to that? To have a nice team. Oh, secret to that. I mean, don't get me wrong. You can't keep everybody happy. Mm. That's one of the things you can't keep everybody happy. But I, I, I really try my hardest to try and keep everybody happy. Mm. Rightly or wrongly, I know there will be times where, you know, someone will get upset because, you know, either something's been said or I've done something in a certain way and whatever. But I always try my best to try and get around as many people as possible. I, I try to be very open as a family mm-hmm. to feedback um, you know, we have, we have the app where obviously the, you know, the, the guys can check in and everything else. There's also that chat option yeah, there. Yeah. So if they decided that they wanted to, you know, send us a message or an email or whatever it is, they can do that via that. Um, and we're very open as a family to say, listen, if you're challenged by something, please let us know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not the fact that we'll shut them down and go, no, it's not being done like that. It's doing, we're doing it this way. We'll always try and be open-minded. So even today, speaking to some of the guys today, some of them, you know, are not happy to do the full takeover yeah. throws, but they're quite happy to do the ones yeah. where you're taking them around the hip. Um, so for myself, from a teaching perspective, then for me to try and help those students out to have a happy team, I suppose, mm. or a happy yeah. group of people, then I'll try to develop it, develop it in a way that's mm. going to suit them, not necessarily suit me. Yeah. So, but for the team, I mean, we, you know, we, we try and work it that the team get um, something that, again, for, for future reference, not that they know it as of yet, um, you know, there will be half price seminars mm. you know no no price so if we do we put our own seminar on it will be free for them mm. you know if we put an outside seminar like for yourself it will either be half price yeah. it will be free for the team leaders yeah, so I, I do that as well to my mic my, my yeah. always got the discount so yeah so it, it's i know it's i know it's only money mm. but you know that little bit of like recognition for them to say yeah. thank you very much for putting your you know, putting your um, you know, yourself forward to, yeah. to help develop the other people within the club and help that child or help that teenager. Um, because, you know, can we do it on our own? Yes. Is it easier with leaders in the place? Yes, mm-hmm. 100%. And not only that, they have the opportunity then of then being able to grow their own leadership skills and be more confident in themselves by helping someone else. Mm. So, uh, you know, that's that's probably one of the things we try and do uh, to help, you know, have a good team, I suppose. You know, they're always willing to help out, whether it's picking up mats, whether it's holding a set of pads, um, whether it's teaming up with someone or, or just, um, you know, just helping with a mm. account with Qatar, yeah. you know, so. 
How how do you um, navigate the so many people with different needs coming to you from the point of view of admin? I know you've got the. Uh, Chrissy. Yes. Uh, I remember the name. Yeah. <laughs> um, Chrissy doing a lot of stuff, but you know, it, it's just everybody willingly or not pulling in different directions, right? I want yeah. this in my club. I want this in a club. How do you find a happy medium? So we've had very much uh, um, an evolving syllabus. When we first set up in 2017, we had this one direction where we were going. It was like, no, this is how we're going to do it, da-da-da-da-da. And then we suddenly realised that it, it, wouldn't, it, it, it can't be that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, you know, coming, back, coming back to you know, the previous experience, it was the fact of regardless whether you were five, six, seven, eight or nine mm-hmm. or whether you were 65, you all had that same syllabus to do. Yeah. So that five or six-year-old had to learn their first kata and all their basics exactly the same as a, a 65-year-old mm-hmm. or a 40-year-old or whatever it was. And for us now, for me to understand that, I was like, right, actually, this four, five, six, seven, eight-year-olds are not developed the yes. way that our teens are and they're not you know teens are not developed the way that our adults are so to have that thing of like people going i need this i need that we've had to quickly sort of have a look at certain things and go right our four to eight year olds you know they need to know you know as long as they can stand in some sort of stance mm-hmm. as long as they can have some sort of guard as long as they can strike pretty well a few blocks here and there um as long as their focus is good and their confidence is building then you know, as they grade, it's not necessarily grading on, you know, they can't do that cutter right or they can't do this mm. right, but they can do that right and that right <clears> and that right. And so that's how we sort of the, like look at the, the, the different ways of you know, age groups. We do have obviously children with autism and ADHD. And um, with that, again, it potentially it has to be almost like a, another separate syllabus for them. So not not as in they don't need to do anything, yeah, yeah. but we have to develop it in a way. So we have some children that they don't make eye contact with us when mm. we when they first start. You know, we're a young lad now called Morgan, lovely lad. When he first started with us, could not make eye contact. Mm. Didn't want to do anything. He was a re- you know a very confident lad, but he he couldn't focus on you. He didn't want to look at you. Now he's a red belt. He's yeah. How old is he now? I can't remember. 13, 14, maybe something like that. He can hit like a, you know, he can hit like a, a, you know, a train, right? He can talk to you now. You can have a full-blown conversation with you now. You can spar with him. Mm -hmm. And the confidence that he's got from being an autistic child, like, he's totally different now. So, you know, and again, having that. So it's an evolving syllabus for him. Mm -hmm. So there are certain things that I, I expect from him. But there's also certain things that I know that he struggles with where I have to go, okay, let's take that in consideration and try and work on that a little bit more for him mm. for his next grade. Yeah, yeah. I've got the same with Danny. So yeah, 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 yeah. You have to uh, kind of adjust as yes. you go. You yeah, know. yeah. Cool. Superb. Yeah. Um, where people can find you? So we're on socials <laughs> all over. So Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok. So I it's not necessary. I don't do too much work on TikTok, but I do put the odd video up out out there. Um, obviously not so much as yourself. <laughs> um, we do have YouTube, but that's more so now as a private um channel that I have for my students. Um, I very rarely put bits and pieces out on YouTube now for the public. Um, I normally keep the YouTube stuff for obviously just for our students because I might have a pre-assessment mm. and I'll do a video and do it as a private video yeah. for them on YouTube. Um, but yeah, because Oku Karate Do um, on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and yeah, that's um, pretty much us really. But. Cool. So if you guys want to support John, I think the best way would be to attend the seminars. Yeah, absolutely. So on seminars and... Yeah, and I know, obviously, you know, again, if you get in touch with Les, obviously Les can, you know, put you in touch with us, and likewise, we can do the same thing, obviously, for him as well, yeah, having that support network. All the links going to be in the description below, and if you guys want to support the show, the best way is to listen to the other episode. Um, thank you very much for your um, 
Kindness. No, perfect. Coffee. Yeah, and yeah. A chat. <laughs> yeah, coffee and a chat. Lovely. And uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, you know, although I did get a little bit emotional through that, um, that was the real me coming out. So cool. that's for winning. Yeah, thank you for that. Cool. Appreciate it.